Welcome to the only closet in our house. We don't have a pantry or a linen closet, so this is the closet that kind of becomes the catch-all space. And so because of that, I like to stay on top of decluttering this closet, so it's not gonna be this huge transformation or this massive declutter. But more than anything, I wanted to show you my thought process of how I decide what to declutter, and then also what to do with some of these items and specifically relevant to some of the crafting supplies and just arts and craft things, because as a homeschooling mom, this has been my downfall all too often. Personally, I like to start off with the easiest areas first. So this might be a shelf, a bin, or a basket. Whatever is the easiest to declutter, I start off with that because it kind of gives me momentum and it encourages me to continue with the decluttering. So in this example, I see these paint cans up at the top and I know for a fact they do not belong in this closet. They belong in our tool shed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those where they belong. And then I also had this plant spray that we made for our plants outside and it does not belong inside our house. We usually keep that in our shed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these and put them where they go. Now, generally though, I don't necessarily recommend you put things right away because if you're anything like me, you may get distracted on the way and then completely forget about your decluttering. So sometimes I make piles and then handle them later. But in this instance, I know for a fact there's lots of things in that closet that I've been meaning to put away and I haven't done. So for this instance, I'm actually putting things away as I go. But it just depends on you and knowing yourself. If you're gonna get distracted, then maybe consider putting them in piles and handling them later. Right now what I could do is continue with the top shelf and just do area by area or like just do whatever smallest zone first. But I think I'm going to do the easiest things first, which is the, just basically the relocating stuff. So I bought some clearance uh, tights for my daughter, so I'm going to put those in her room. And then I've got some of these papers. So we had made like a little city that we were playing with. And this is beat up. It, we The kids have played with it for a while, so I'm going to put this in our burn pile because we usually have like bonfires for our extra papers. Um, and then... I don't know what these papers are over here some artwork um i don't think this one was like a particular special one so i'm gonna put those there as well um so that kind of makes it a little bit easier to just go by the easiest stuff first because it makes more of a difference and then you actually see progress happening for our paper clutter i've mentioned it before um that here by the mudroom we have all of our shoes that we use to go outside and then i usually have this little box here because i'm a homeschooling mom so i will have lots of papers and stuff to toss all the time i recommend having some sort sort of a storage solution for all of the messy zones in your home. This is mine. It's not the cutest little basket here, but whatever, it'll do. This little basket has a bunch of things that I'm not really sure what to do with. So I have my kids' toys, uh, which I'm gonna give back to my child, but it's he didn't put them away. And if he didn't put them away, then he gets them confiscated. So they were confiscated for a time. Another little random piece of paper to toss. And something that I find really helpful when I'm decluttering is to physically hold the items in my hand that I have questions over whether or not I should declutter. Maybe this is because I'm more of a visual and tactile learner. So for me, it's really helpful to hold the items to see, hmm, can I use it somewhere else? Or am I actually not going to use it? Or did I even remember that I even had this item? So I think this has a lot to do with whether you're an auditory learner, visual learner, I don't know what it is, but for me, actually taking the items out and holding the item in question really helps me a lot. These balloons, I was gifted balloons and I don't really have parties often, so we'll probably uh, donate them as well. So I'm gonna separate these. Those are to donate and get rid of, and then these are just, just toys. So they go back into my son's room. I see these books up here. Grab that. Um, oh, I had this little gift bag. That's a gift that I'm going to be giving to somebody, so I'm not going to show what's in that one. This is just a whole bunch of crafting supplies that's in here. Um, I'm not sure what to do with these, so we're going to put these down as well to try to figure that out. 
these books have been in my home for a long time, like years, and they are historical and theological writings from the early Christians. But let's just say they're a little bit too smart for me. Like I think they should be for somebody that's just smarter than I, but I do have the perfect person in mind that I can give these to. And this is so funny. Like this bag was from a doctor's office, same as the other one. And it's it's funny because it's the perfect size. So I have a, a perfect gift to give to somebody. One of my favorite ways too, to get rid of books as well, if you maybe want to read them again or if they're special to you, is donate them to your library. I love donating books to my library because that's one way that somebody else can use them. But at the same time, if I were to want to reuse them, then I can just check them out from my library again. But in this case, I, I have somebody in mind that I can give these to. So I'm going to hopefully do that this weekend. So what I've been wanting to do for a while now is to have like a little shelf in our bathroom that guests have access to. We don't have like a designated guest bath, but whenever guests come over, I really want for them to have something that's just kind of like for them so that they feel like loved and you know, be pampered. So I have gotten this at a thrift store and I really, really liked it to put like organic tampons, organic pads, maybe uh, like a bathroom spray, something like that, so that they just feel kind of a little bit more cozy and just to have that detail, you know, that nice touch. And this is just an idea. I haven't done this before, but if you have any ideas of what specifically would be nice to put for guests in a bathroom, I would love your ideas because I haven't ever done this before. That is in the works until that actually gets done. This will just have to stay in the closet. And another tip, once you have a designated area for the items that are going to leave, maybe you're gonna sell, donate, or toss, make sure you actually schedule it on your calendar so that these things actually end up leaving instead of causing more clutter. So moving on to some arts and crafts supplies. I have a lot of arts and crafts supplies. Uh, people have given to me from thrift stores and bargain stores. And while it's much appreciated, Sometimes it can cause a little bit more of a difficulty in figuring out how I can actually incorporate them into my curriculum. So I definitely keep items that I know for a fact that they can use in lots of creative ways. But if you've seen my homeschool curriculum video, you'll see that my approach is very much simple. I want for them to have activities and be able to create things and make things. But at the same time, if I have to scramble to figure out a lesson plan or how I'm going to actually make something to teach them, then it's really causing me more frustration and it's not making me much better of a mom as a result because I'm just grumpy at the fact that I'm burned out from having to plan all these different activities. That's not to say I won't keep things or have different activities. Something that I have often done is that after holidays, I'll check out the thrift stores for arts and crafts supplies because generally they'll have things from the previous season, the previous holiday. And so this is something that is easy that I don't have to necessarily plan. But if I know that I have something that I'm not going to use or I'm not sure how, then I prefer to give it away. And since I've now moved on to the crafting supplies, I am now going through every bin, every basket, just every spot where items have been misplaced. This way it'll be easier to actually make decisions on them because I have all of the items together by category. And that way I can decide what I'm going to keep, what I'm going to get rid of, as well as maybe finding homes for some of these items. So doing it by category here will also help me avoid from having to start over and over and over again as I find new crafting supplies. And something else that I love to do while I'm decluttering is managing my inventory in terms of the things that I need to buy or replace, because inevitably things in your home will break and you will need to buy things and replace things. And so while I'm already going through my items, if I see that something is broken and I need to buy something, I jot it down on my notes app on my phone. This way I can actually get around to it the next time I go to the store instead of constantly forgetting or meaning to get around to it. I think that a major part of decluttering is just being honest with ourselves. For one, sometimes we don't want to create waste and so we hold on to things that we really wouldn't want to keep. But that just means we're choosing to live with that waste. And also, just being realistic about the things that we will and won't be using. Forgiving myself for mistake purchases and just being honest with myself about the items that I will and won't be using helps me to declutter without guilt. I also need to admit my mistake here, so don't do like I did, 
and get yourself a trash bag. This way you'll avoid having to go back and forth to dispose of trash that will come up and you can stay focused on decluttering. I also like to take advantage of my decluttering time to clean any messy areas. And if you haven't already seen my clean with me video, I highly recommend it if you hate cleaning because this was definitely me. And I think it was definitely a self worth thing for me because when I started to view cleaning my home, taking care of my items as self care, I started to view things differently. I started to see that I was worthy of living in a beautiful and clean home. So even though it's an extra step, do not skip the cleaning. It's important. I had this puzzle down here and my family and I, we love to do puzzles together, but until today we hadn't had a home for these items. And although I could put them in our coffee table, which is currently empty, we actually use it for coffee and books. So it's not a very practical place to store them. So I think I'm going to place them all on the shelf at the top and that way they're all together. So if you have any items that you use regularly as you're decluttering and creating more space, make a home for these items to hopefully help you avoid having clutter and have them easily accessible. When finding items at home, I highly recommend you find an area where you actually use them instead of where they may look nice or where someone else would store them. This will make it much more likely that you'll put items back where they belong and avoid clutter in the future. Something that I hope I'll be able to get done today is to take these diapers and wipes to donation. FYI, I do support pro-life ministries because they help to provide formula, diapers, wipes, uh, prenatal care, and even help financially in some cases. And there are thousands of crisis pregnancy resource centers. So this is something that I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get done today because I've had these boxes here for like weeks and I'm like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. And then I, it just doesn't happen. So it is on my to-do list. Something that I like to do, which maybe other people would recommend you not do, is that I like to save little baggies, bins, baskets for a time after I've decluttered items because almost always I end up finding a new way to use that item or maybe place it in a different room or use different items to store it in that end up working out better. So in this instance, I had this little cloth baggie that I reused from something and it worked perfectly to store my kids' little stickers and just their little random stuff. And so I personally like to keep cute little boxes, bins, baskets. You don't always have to have all the purchased storage products and storage solutions that people try to make you think you need. A lot of times, if you just use your creativity and you use things you already have in your home, the more you declutter, the more of those items you'll end up having. And then you'll be able to use them in other spaces or maybe even make them look a little bit nicer. Something that I have personally done is spray painted boxes that I've liked and that way I have like a box that's a pattern that I like. So you can, you can use your creativity. You don't have to always purchase all of these organizational stuff. And honestly, the less you have, the easier organization is. I was speaking with a friend, uh, we'll call her G, and she was talking about how it was always so difficult to organize her home and declutter her home. And once we got into the conversation, I figured out she was using the word declutter, but she was really referring to organizing. She was trying to organize. And I kept telling her, you have to stop trying to organize and declutter. The more you declutter, the easier your organization will be. 
As I am going through my things, I am doing some organization because I have freed up new bins and new little baskets and containers. So I am actually kind of condensing my items to create a little bit more space. However, if you find yourself overwhelmed and have way too many things that you just feel like you don't even know what to do or where to begin, I do not recommend organizing them in the very beginning because you're just gonna feel even more overwhelmed and then you're not going to continue with that momentum of decluttering. So just make that distinction. Are you organizing or are you decluttering? And if you have a lot less stuff, then it might be easier to go ahead and organize while you're at it, but I do not recommend it if you feel like you have way too much stuff. Something that I used to do when I first started decluttering, similar to having a trash bag ready so that you don't get distracted and stay focused on decluttering, is that I would have a donate bin or a donate box, basket, whatever. This way, as I found items that I knew were going to leave my home, I would automatically place them there and then I would handle them later on. That way I could stay focused and kind of keep that decluttering momentum. So in this case, it's my little pink bag over there that I just kind of reused for that purpose. But you can use whatever, you can use a trash bag, you can use a bin, a basket, but the point is that you have things set aside so that you can stay focused on the decluttering. I feel like crafting supplies can be so difficult to declutter because there's so many little pieces, so many little tiny things to decide, should I keep this, should I not keep this? And it can be a bit overwhelming if you have a lot of stuff and not only that, but then we end up with decision fatigue after we've made decision after decision after decision. And then we're just like, I don't know. I don't know anymore. And either we make decisions that we do end up regretting or we just decide, you know, I'm going to leave it all together. And that's a point I want to make that I have regretted decluttering decisions. I've seen other minimalist YouTubers talk about how, oh, they never regretted anything. It really wasn't that big of a deal. And I think to myself, huh? well, then I must have done something wrong because I have regretted things. And they're not really that big of a deal, truly. I admit that. But at the same time, I recognize that sometimes I have decluttered things that later on I think, oh man, I could have used that. Like I had a little wire from all of this arts and craft stuff that I thought, what, what could I use this for? I've already used it for the arts and craft purpose that it was intended for. But is there another way that I could use it in my home? And after I had decluttered it, I realized that I could have used it to tie my Monstera plant. And I thought, well, dang, I already decluttered it. So it's just like one of those little examples. But you know what? I ended up finding two little hair bands, tied them together, and I made it work. So yes, you can have regrets, but it's really not gonna be the end of the world. I'm not gonna say that you will not regret decluttering decisions. Sometimes you will. But I think it also kind of stretches that creativity because you're going to find another way to resolve it. And so I would rather do away with the guilt, do away with the fear of well, what if I do need it and what if I could use it in something and just live with a peace, live with a calmer home, a manageable home that I enjoy staying in because I've already done that work beforehand to manage the clutter and stay on top of it. And honestly, the decluttering regrets have truly been helpful. And I say that because in the very beginning, I remember that se around seven, eight years ago, I donated some of my prom dresses and I loved those dresses. And the reason that I did it was because I had a very, very, very big vanity problem. And it was from self-consciousness, uh, lack of self-worth, lack of self-love. I felt like I needed things to make me beautiful, to make me valuable. And realizing that, I knew that I had to do something about it. And so I decided I would get rid of my prom dresses, get rid of my nail polish, get rid of my hair extensions, get rid of all of those things that I used to have. And it was hard. And for a long time, I regretted it. I thought, oh, I spent all this money and they were so beautiful and I could use them again and yada, yada, yada. But truly what it did for me was it removed that hardcore attachment to stuff. And instead it made me value my life. It made me value me as a person. It made me question, who am I? What, what do I have to offer? What do I want out of life? Instead of just focusing on how can I look better for other people or what other people think of me. And so decluttering regrets can really teach you a lot, a lot about who you are, what you value, what you want out of life. And so don't take this as a negative thing. I definitely have learned a lot of lessons from my decluttering regrets and eventually I move on and I heal from it. And now I don't miss those prom dresses anymore. I don't even remember what they looked like, but I missed them for a long time thereafter. 
but it's not the end of the world and it can actually serve you a lesson if you do end up with decoloring regrets. So just, just know that it's okay. You'll be okay. So while I was decluttering over on that end, I realized that I've had something under my bed for a while. And a few weeks ago, my husband bought me a Dyson cordless vacuum. And I'm super excited about it because I had been telling him that I sweep the house like several times a day because I have kids and I'm homeschooling mom. And so it's just, I have to sweep several times a day. And so he was kind enough to buy me a Dyson vacuum. And I kept the box with the little attachments for a while, just in case I might would need them because generally I am the kind of person that if something comes with a bunch of gadgets and gizmos as an attachment, I don't necessarily care. Like I want simple, I want to make sure that I get a job done as efficiently as possible. And I don't see the need for all the little gadgets and gizmos that something comes with. And this one actually came with all those things. It wasn't something that I necessarily felt like I needed. And so I wanted to give myself some time to see if I actually needed them. And I've had the Dyson like maybe a month now. So I realize I'm gonna get rid of the little attachments that the thing comes with and see if I can just donate them. That would be something that I personally recommend. If something like makes you have to work more, like what's the point of that? I mean, I understand that like you can do like specialty cleaning and stuff like that. So maybe you wanna keep that. For me, like, we have a one of those like commercial vacuums that he uses for like construction so like that works for a car it doesn't work for a house so the reason that i wanted one is for house cleaning so i don't need like all these other little thingies like no no simple is better for me so i'm gonna find somebody that can have these things and then that way i can also get rid of this box and declutter it out from under my bed that maybe don't follow my advice because I don't want you to declutter something that you regret later on. What I personally did was I kept it for a while to make sure that I wasn't actually going to need it and then regret it because I had never actually used this particular item. If it's something that you've had for a long time and you have yet to use it, chances are you're probably not going to use it. Ooh, and look at here. It has some tissue paper inside the box, so I'm actually going to reuse this for the books that I was going to gift. This is perfect. So now I can actually reuse this and then just get rid of the box. So here is the final reveal. I know it's not this huge, massive transformation, but for me, it's really helpful to stay on top of this and do it frequently, especially because I don't have a basement or a garage. It's so easy to pile things up for later. So let me know in the comments, were you decluttering a specific area of your home during this video? And if not, I challenge you. Pick an area that you're going to declutter and set a scheduled time. And let me know in the comments what area that's going to be. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss when I post a new video. Until next time, bye.